Welcome back to the Freedom Salon Podcast. I got Whitney here today with me. Of As course. you probably already knew, there was nobody <laughs> different last time, so we're back here again. We're talking about something today that um, we're extremely passionate about. It's the reason that we started uh, Whitney Evans Beauty, and then now we're to the Freedom Salon Podcast uh, talking about goal setting. Yes. So that's been a huge part of everything that we've done inside the salon absolutely from day one uh you know when you come out of the beauty industry so you're a you're been in beauty school for a year you're going through the process of you know learning the technique of doing hair learning how to talk to clients from all different walks of life you're coming out and you're like all right i'm ready to do hair you know i'm ready to make a hundred thousand dollars a year it's that's a big key word in the industry these days like i'm gonna make a hundred grand mm -hmm. uh, six figure stylist which is completely possible yes um we see it happen often mm -hmm. we've had it happen in the salon mm -hmm. we've had it happen in the salon with people working three to four days a week yes. um so it can be done in all different uh shapes and sizes of work flow and how much you're putting out how many clients you're doing and whatnot. So there's all, all different hacks to get that result that you want. So uh, I think the first kind of item that we talk about is, all right, so if somebody want to, wants to make $100,000 a year, they just came out of beauty school, they have no clientele, mm -hmm. their technique's awesome, they've landed in a salon, uh, they understand balayage, they understand updos, they understand cuts, they understand styles. How do they get to $100,000 a year? I say, I mean, I know what we've done with the salon is we almost like create a roadmap with goal setting with our one-on-one -on -one meetings every month. Um, and then we set small goals to get to the big goals. Right. Like break it down like monthly because when you're a new stylist and you're like, oh, I want to make $100,000 a year. But how in the world do I do that? Like, it's not just like you wake up. There's lots of little, mm -hmm. like I, we did a talk at the beauty school a few months ago and I was like, you know, your, your small daily, weekly, monthly habits are actually what make your career 100%. Without question. Yeah. Yes. I mean, consistency over intensity, right? Yes. If you wake up and you're like, I'm going to crush it. I'm going to be the world's most powerful hairstylist ever. I'm going to do a hundred heads of hair. Awesome. Yes. But then you got to replicate that because a hundred heads of hair don't equal a hundred thousand dollars, unfortunately, unless you're getting paid, you know, incredible amounts of money per head of hair. But still, you want to be consistent because yeah. you get to show up every day. You get to affect people's lives. You get to serve people, uh, people that you give value to value you. They want to see you often. You know, what's the average uh, client come back for a color or a hairstyle? Mm -hmm. How often is it? Six to eight weeks. Six to eight weeks usually, and I and I would say like number one, like first goal for goal setting in a salon space, is like client retention, mm -hmm. um, because that's the less people you're gonna have to go out and find a new um, head of hair to do. Like if you retain that person that you just did their hair, then you're guaranteed that paycheck for you know in six weeks you're going to have that money again and then in six weeks you're going to have that money again and so you end up you know making money with a, a smaller group of people in a shorter amount of time when you keep those people with you versus constantly having toner turnover with different oh yeah well, it's a, a lot of people are like i'm in the beauty industry and i'm like heck yeah but you're also in the relationship industry yes because that relationship not only is going to feed you your family you know, whatever you're using the money for that you're obviously making to build a career. Yeah. But then if you do well enough for them, you know, it's a very big topic in today's world of, yeah. hey, I saw your picture when you were in Asheville on that beautiful, you know, hike that you were on. Your hair looked awesome. Who did your hair? And you're like, oh, that's so-and-so over at you know, whatever salon or that's yeah. Whitney over at Whitney She told me about that hike. You're, you that's know. it. And that's, that starts yeah. the attribution to, yeah. which would be a good segue here, to online booking. Yeah. So you did someone's hair. Mm -hmm. They loved it. Yeah. They're coming back. They booked six weeks to come see you again. Mm -hmm. They talked to a friend. That friend's like, ooh, I want to go there. Where do I find them? They're like, oh, they're on Instagram. They go to Instagram. They see that, you know, you're they're consistently putting out all types of different hair colors because maybe they like the style, but they want a different color. Then they see, oh, they have a website. They go to the website. They're looking through online booking. So the power of online booking that we've seen is absolutely huge because a lot of bookings happen after work hours. 
Mm-hmm. So let's and our hours can be late, so I'm not saying go to eight PM and then yeah. Sundays it goes to six. But let's say it's nine thirty, you can't call the salon. So what do you do? You get online, you book that appointment. Yeah. Well, if you have your work out on social media like you should in terms of putting out the kind of work that you want to do, yeah, someone that. finds you and it attracts you. And then online bookings translate into goals. Yeah. So that's why we talk about that. So, you know, if you can get online bookings, if you can get DMs to get people to book through, if you can get people to call the salon, if you can get people to book with you while they're at the salon to rebook, all those are different distribution channels yes. to hit your goal. So, um, and that's a lot of information I know just to cover and someone probably asking, okay, I kind of know all that, but what is, how do we kind of dissect that mm-hmm. and turn that into an actual plan if they're listening? Let's say they're in a salon in Texas somewhere and they're like, well, how do I utilize that? We can build a specific plan based on that pricing that that person has. So mm-hmm. someone can be at $165 service or someone can be at $125 service. Their their goal outline is going to be different because yeah. their pricing is different. Um, and we I don't have like- that in our salon, but... Well, when once you figure out what your like per hour number is that you want to have, then you can like cycle back into figuring out, okay, well, I need to do this X amount of clients to make this. Mm-hmm. But really, it's just good to have a goal. Like I think like what's been great in our company is like we meet with the girls monthly, like we talk, we give them a number and like most of the time they hit it but if they don't hit it and they get really close it's Mm -hmm. still better than they did the month before and still like one step closer to that dollar number at the end of the year that they really want to see right so um it's just good to almost like for me and i know in my personal life and professional life when i write down things that i want to see like it holds myself accountable to me to like make it happen, to put things in motion to make it happen, whether it be something personal like a workout to, you know, or I want to learn how to do hair extensions or I want to do a podcast. Like I feel like sometimes when you write it down to yourself and make a promise to yourself, Mm -hmm. I feel like that's where goals start. Yeah. Oh yeah. It'd be, once it becomes a belief and you're like, all right, I can achieve this. It's just kind of chipping away each day of getting at that. Like, um, you know, on the number side, I can think of a girl in the salon right now. She's wanted to make eighty thousand dollars a year, and I think last year she was at like sixty-seven or sixty-eight. And we're off for two months. Yeah. So <laughs> if that month would have, or yeah. if those two months would have been at play, we would have actually surpassed the goal. And but then this, thinking about it yeah. and knowing that that was, you know, the reason she's still. And now this year she'll pass that. Yes. You know, so um, which is a another thing that we really like to focus on as well is um, the pace reports. That brings us to something that I think has been extremely powerful in the salon is obviously the monthly meetings, but yes. looking at the pace of where someone's going yes. and how they're actually going to get to their goal at the end of the year. And if they're not, so let's say it's, you know, July and you're, you know, looking at the pace. And if anybody's kind of curious as a stylist of like, what's pace mean? Pace is like what you're on pace to do. So like if you're running a mile and you're on your first lap, and you got to run four laps to get to a mile. You have a pace time. Yes, you do. So think about you're running at a you're running a not a race, but you're running you're on a yearly journey in the salon, and you want to you know make a certain amount of money. Or in a race, you want to hit a certain amount of time. You want to hit a, a a time goal. Think about it like that. So if you in a race are a little slow, you got to figure out a way to you know gain steps and get to the point of making that time so in the salon side let's say that you know that there's some time slots that aren't getting filled and you're like i'm here i'm ready to do the work but why are those time slots not getting filled well it may be that hey those bookings aren't showing available online because there's not enough time yeah so or when you're going to rebook you're booking somebody in the middle of the day versus like being strategic about it and like you're say booking that person an hour after you come in and so then that morning appointment if if it's a color they can't book there right and trying to double i know like what i preach especially some of my experienced stylists that maybe aren't double booking yet or you know want but still want to make more money you know go ahead and start doubling to leave open spaces for online bookings that was key what some of ours to like Yep. jump up because what it was is like 
you know, they wanted more bookings, but they were not doubling like their regulars. And so it would show online when people would go try to book that it was too already booked. And yeah. so they weren't getting, they were getting passed over for those new bookings and they were going to other people versus them. Right. So. Well, and that's what I've always told any stylist. It's like, hey, I would love to immediately increase my revenue. Yeah normalize double booking yeah you know find peace in it you know i mean i know it's different but it's, it's totally achievable yes you, you can manage those two relationships at a time especially mm-hmm. um you know in our salon once you get to the point to where you've normalized double booking and you're really getting to the point where your books are getting full you get an associate yeah that associate's there to be your extra set of hands and hair to get done yes. on whatever process you need everybody yeah. does things differently but um you know, that's what you're always working towards. Mm-hmm. And then those things affect your pace. So yes. let's say you start out at the beginning of the year, you're on pace to do 50,000, but you learn how to double book. Yeah. And then you learn how to get an extra set of hands maybe towards the end of the year. Now you're on pace to do 75,000. Well, what changed? Just a few things. Yeah. You know, it's just not like, I feel like, you know, you have the same amount of hours in the day. I guess, then, you know, as the girl next to you, as, you know, maybe somebody you really look up to in your salon, and that could be, you know, invite them to coffee, talk to them, see what their hacks are. You may learn something. Um, And just really maximize your time instead of going in the back and talking about your weekend, which is fun. It's great. You you know, usually your team's your friends. You want to catch up. Yeah. You know, maybe slide a, a haircut in there or a base color or something to, you know, to keep you busy and to help you reach your goals. Yeah. Success is in the details and the yes. finite things that you do each day. Yes. Um, and it's been amazing to, to sit back and watch, you know, 23-year-old girls make $75,000 a year. It's insane. I mean, it, and then I say, hey, I'm pretty happy there, but I, I would really like to move up to, you know, $100,000 a year. I think I'm capable of doing that. So there are um, principles yeah. that if you set those principles in your life as a stylist, it's not if you're going to hit your goal, it's, it's when. when. Yeah. And, and if you're working at a salon that, you know, is already focusing on that and you haven't really bought in, buy into that mm-hmm. because it's a game changer. You're going to, you're at, you're at the salon either way. Yes. You've got the talent. Or you wouldn't be at that salon. And it's fun. I mean, just think like what we do. And this is even when, I mean, every job's stressful. I'm sure even working at, you know, Disney World, the happiest place on earth is stressful at some point. You know, to, to say that you'll never have stress or never have a bad day is unrealistic. But when I do, I always like scale it back and I'm like, you know what? What I do is fun. Like people are happy to see me. Like Mm -hmm. I'm not like. A brain surgeon that people were like not super happy to see me like what I do no one's gonna die you know and I think with Instagram and stuff especially what I've seen in our younger stylists and younger generation is they get really you know intimidated and scared and they get like this perfectionist mentality which is good if you know how to use it to drive you mm-hmm. versus inhibit your creativity because right. at the end of the day I feel like I do and other stylists you know, that I know and work alongside, we do our best work when we're like in a free flowing, like creative, happy state. Without question. Well, and fear is there to push you. Yes. But a lot of people sometimes get to the point where it's pulling them back. Yeah. And they're like, okay, I need, I need to not do that. I need to read, but let it push you. Let it take you to that next level. Yeah. And there's most of the time, especially if you're a younger stylist, there's somebody in the salon that's already doing what you know you can do. You just need that extra push. Yeah. So lean on them for that. Yeah, and, 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 like, that. and if you're in an environment, I know our um, culture is we want each other to succeed. We're super happy when, you know, our fellow teammate is successful at something, you know, and if hopefully you're in that type of salon atmosphere too, and, you know, your mentors and the people around you want to help you. So just reach out and ask the right questions. Without question. And they'll be, they'll be there for you. And everybody's goals are different. Yeah. So. If you think that your goal is not good, that's not true. No. You know, like everybody needs different things. Yeah. So the person and you that wants may to, not be somebody that's also driven by like an actual money number. You might be driven by, I want to buy this certain car or yep. I want to buy my first house or I want to go on this vacation or I want to be able to help provide for my parents. You know, there's... Or I want to put my spouse through pharmacy school. We had a yeah. girl do that, you yeah. know, which is amazing. Like goals. Yes. 
it, it's it's beautiful. It's something that you see on every you know thing that you look at anymore. But the word itself, understood, yeah. is life changing. I it mean, is. it really is. And if you're coming out of beauty school and you're not sure you know where you want to go to do hair or you know how long you you want to do it, whether if it's like, hey, I want to do hair for twenty years, or hey, I'm thinking ten, whatever that is. Mm-hmm. Think about the goal before you make the decision on where you're going to end up because that is huge. Yeah. You know, it's like you, you've got to think about that because the, the worst place to be is in a position where you don't have the ability to truly go after your goals because it's not a culture that's based on that. Yes. Um, and I think that is a possibility in the industry if you don't yes. think about that. It's not that the salon that you're thinking about going to is a bad salon. It's no. they're not going to support your goals no um so look for those goal-oriented salons if you're goal-oriented um and if you're not sure about goals reach out to us yeah you know we'd love to give you more information on it we've worked with you know multiple stylists on the same level and uh, we've seen a consistent outcome so i I think there's a lot for that so it's not rocket science it's just being consistent yes knowing what your goal is believing that you can achieve it Mm -hmm. and then literally looking at it every single day and then each month you get to look at it and you're like, oh my God, I did that. Yeah. Oh my God, I can and do this. And then it's somehow, it's so crazy when you write it down. Like I've come across like old notes in my phone. Yeah. And like everything I've r- written down has happened, you know, oh, and it's been like from three years ago, you know. So it, when thoughts pop in your head, like don't think that they're coincidence, write them down because it, it's insane how God blesses you in that way. And mm-hmm. like when it's in your like subconscious mind, like you can help make it happen. Yes. And it's like making a promise to yourself. I'll say that all day long. hundred percent. And in the future, I think if we get a few girls uh, yes. that have been in the goal atmosphere I for the last few years. Yeah. Yeah. And then being able to talk about like how I was making, you know, let's say a girl had a $70,000 goal and she's like, yeah, I, I set that goal when I was making, you know, 25,000 mm-hmm. and they're going to, and I, We've had conversations with them that I know are going to be like eye openers once we get them on the podcast. Yeah, because it's not hard. It's just it's getting, just consistent. Yeah, and it's, having fun and and like believing in yourself that you're worth it and just the consistency in it. I love it. Yep. Stay tuned for those podcasts coming out. Yeah, we're so excited. Yeah. Thank you for your time today, Whip. Thank you. Yes. He's the gold man. Gold man. <laughs> yeah.